What is up Ninja Note viewers, in this presentation we're going to be covering perpetual inventory system entries. So we're going to look at how to actually purchase using a perpetual inventory system and actually record those journal entries. So we're going to have, we're only going to be covering the purchases side. So what, what do, what certain transactions are associated with purchases? Well we have obviously the first one which is just a normal purchase. The second one has to do with shipping costs. So shipping costs can either be for the uh, seller paying or the purchaser or the buyer of the inventory paying those shipping costs. And we'll see how uh, the accounting is done differently for each. We'll also see purchase return journal entries, which are going to be when any inventory is returned because it's defunct or it's missing or incomplete. So you can kind of expect why you would return inventory and we'll be covering that and finally we'll also cover discounts and I think that one is self-explanatory so what what we're actually gonna see in common with all of these all of these different transactions is a perpetual inventory system account which is frequently used called merchandise inventory and this account is going to come up in all four of these transactions and I just wanted to remind you that this account is only a perpetual inventory system account so make sure you remember that and let's start off with purchases let's start off right there so let me just close that and let's say we have purchases we have inventory coming in it's got it's been FedEx overnight quickly and maybe it's maybe the cost of it is five thousand dollars with five percent tax which is included in the price of that five thousand dollars well how are we going to account for this now remember I said merchandise inventory is going to be used for each of these transactions so since we're receiving inventory we debit merchandise inventory since that is our account and we're going to be crediting accounts payable normally because normally we pay with inventory or we pay for inventory with accounts payable but make sure you read the question to make sure you're not actually paying for it in cash and that would be for five thousand dollars debits and five thousand dollars for a credit um, in intermediate accounting courses you're actually going to see that the tax is going to be reported separately where where merchandise inventory will be the same but the accounts payable will be split up into accounts payable and taxes payable but since we're doing introductory to financial accounting we're just going to keep it simple and use this entry so this is what you would write for a purchase transaction on your test so now let's cover those shipping costs those shipping costs are going to are going to come in two different versions the first one has to do with the with the purchaser paying those costs which is called FOB shipping so whenever the buyer purchases the goods they are going to be paying for the shipping costs and that's called FOB shipping so the buyer pays and FOB just stands for free on board so I don't think you'll be tested on that but that is what it stands for and the other one is FOB destination which is when the seller pays for the shipping costs and I think a good way to kind of remember this or the way I normally remember this is to think that the seller wants to get the inventory to that destination so just think that destination is always associated with the seller and since it's always associated with the seller for FOB destination the seller is going to pay for those shipping costs. So let's actually look at the two different uh, separate journal entries we're going to be having. So FOB shipping is when the buyer pays. So let's say that we have $50 of shipping costs. Well, we're going to use that account again, which is merchandise inventory, because we're capitalizing, we're capitalizing the cost of, of this shipping cost to our inventory thus increasing the value of our inventory in total 
and normally shipping is paid in cash since it's such an immaterial small amount. And that would be a $50 debit and a $50 credit. And if we had FOB destination, if you remember, the seller is going to be paying for those costs. So what are we going to report as a transaction? Well, there's going to be no entry, right? Because we're not the seller. We're the purchaser of the goods. And we, since we are purchasing the goods, we're not paying for the shipping costs. So it's not on our books. And that's essentially what is going to be for the... Uh, the uh, shipping costs. So just always remember that shipping costs are capitalized to merchandise inventory. Let's move on to purchase returns. This one is a really simple one to remember because all you need to do is you need to just think about what is that entry for a purchase. Well we debit merchandise inventory and we credit accounts payable, right? So when we have a purchase return, it's just going to be the exact opposite because we're just returning the goods so the inventory is leaving our books and the accounts payable is being reduced because we no longer have to pay for that inventory. So if it's $5,000 each, of course the debit and credit will be $5,000 each and it's just going to be the same for that that's reversing entry. So that is a purchase return, very simple. And the last one has to do with discounts. So there are two different types of discounts. The first one being a quantity discount. So when you actually buy in bulk, you may receive a discount. So always remember that in case you're ever purchasing certain inventory goods. And you will also have what is known as a purchase discount and this is going to come up more frequently and this is when we pay when we pay cash when we pay cash early for that that merchandise inventory that they've sold to us because if you think about it the seller who actually sold us this inventory wants to collect cash as early as possible so what's going to happen is if you pay for the inventory earlier then you're going to get a discount and normally the discount is going to be expressed in this this form where it says 2 slash 10 and 30 and what this means is that you're going to be collecting a 2 a 2 percent let me just switch colors a 2 percent discount if you pay within 10 days and anything after that is just going to be the full the full price without any discount and this stands for net 30 which is just the entire amount so if we have a discount let's think about this let's use that that beginning inventory or that beginning journal entry for purchasing inventory so we have merchandise inventory and accounts payable each for five thousand dollars my writing's getting a little bit messy here I apologize and if we have if we have a discount now let's say that the discount let's say the discount is fifty dollars what's gonna happen is the accounts payable is going to be paid off because this this liability is on our books for five thousand so we remove it for five thousand but the thing is, we only pay a cash amount of $49.50. And that's because we received that discount. And look, we have we have an imbalance here, right? We can't have a debit for $5,49.50. We have to make this balance. So the last one, of course, is what I said, which means merchandise inventory shows up in all transactions on the purchasing side. So merchandise inventory is going to be credited for $50 and that's just to show that since we exchange $49.50 worth of cash for the inventory we're getting technically $49.50 worth of merchandise inventory which is why we credit it and reduce the merchandise inventory on our books by $50. So that is the four different entries for our purchasing 
of the perpetual inventory system and in the next tutorial we're going to be looking at the different entries for sales so make sure to check that out and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial if you have any questions regarding accounting or any other material within our videos you can tweet us at note pirate you can like us on Facebook to receive updates or to share any quick anecdotes about how our videos might have helped and like always thanks for watching us on YouTube